October 11th, Wednesday, 2017. It is day 265 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Donald Trump threatens to revoke NBC's broadcasting license. Now, as much as I would like to see that happen, we have we got to step back for a moment and uh, think about this logically. The first thing that comes to my mind is why in the hell do you even need a broadcasting license if you're the press? I mean, we definitely need more independent media, free media. The problem is the way it works with TV. They make it so expensive to have a TV station, a TV channel, that you have to have connections to the Federal Reserve banking cartel. And, of course, now we have a, a monopoly. We have... A small group of people who own everything, and Donald Trump doesn't like what they're saying about him, so he's just going to think about revoking their license. Now, I don't think he has the power to revoke his license. Again, this is Donald Trump in reality TV mode. He's just keeping the circus, keeping the you know excitement in the circus. The bottom line is we need more competition. We need a, at least a couple free, independent media presses out there, I mean, with Gentile owners. I mean, we don't even have, I don't think we have one TV station or one major media owned by a Gentile. So, and then you got the thing about the, the Constitution. In the beginning, our founding fathers said, you will never need a license. We should, you don't have to have a license to be the free press. That was part of our founding of this country. That they, Our founding fathers knew how important it was to have a free press. Now we have a monopoly, a group, a, a small group of people who have a loyalty to a foreign power. They're connected to the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. They own everything. They bought it up. I mean, we're sitting here being lied to. And then Donald Trump is getting a little piece of the action. Donald Trump is now feeling what Americans have been feeling for a long time. We've been lied to for so long, but Americans just sit there and take it. Donald Trump, he wants to fight back and revoke their license. And again, I would love to see all of these mainstream media people lose their license. But the fact is, they don't even they shouldn't even have to have a license. I should Nobody should have a license, and somehow we should have a, a, a fair banking system to where we can have more Gentiles in the media. But hey, it's just a pipe dream, I guess. And as long as our politicians bow down to a foreign power, I mean, we're going nowhere. Gentiles are just going nowhere. It looks like we're still being censored here, but uh, if we do a search on Donald Trump, uh, comes up, uh, he hates everybody. What is this? I hate everyone in the White House. I mean, is this, could this be true? I mean, is, is Donald Trump coming unhinged? Is he unraveling? This is another big story. And apparently this is what, if, if more than one people are saying this now, that Donald Trump is unraveling. He hates everybody. He's unfocused, dark moods. Uh, there are people out there like Alex Jones who says he's being drugged. Is he very depressed? I don't know. Uh, people here saying he's unstable. He's losing a step. He's unraveling. This is this is troubling. Uh, make no mistake about it. There's no job more stressful than the president of the United States, and he and I have never seen a president ever attacked as much as this president by mainstream media. And of course, but the problem is Donald Trump brings a lot of it onto himself. He, he brings it down on himself. He's talking too much. And of course he's surrounded by criminals. He's surrounded by dual citizens who have a loyalty to a foreign power. So what was he expecting when he walked into the White House and he brought in all those Goldman Sachs Wall Street scum after complaining about Hillary Clinton? Saying that Hillary Clinton was in bed with Wall Street he does the same thing. And then he says, okay, I'm going to take away NBC's license. And then he goes on Fox News. Oh, Fox News is okay. It's, it's all a joke. It's all one big circus. I kind of agree with Steve Bannon 
on this number here. I mean, if you're going to handicap whether Donald Trump makes it, I mean, I, th I think that's a really good number there. I mean, 30% chance. I do believe that Donald Trump has a less, he's definitely less than 50% chance of making it. So I got to give Steve Bannon credit on that number, his handicapping skills. So we'll just wind this segment down today looking for some more interesting news. This guy here, he's a hotel maintenance worker. He was on mainstream media. A lot of people don't believe what he said, but if his story's true, then he was pretty heroic. He was up there on the 32nd floor, and apparently the shooter was shooting down the hallway first, shooting down the hallway at him. So the shooter shot a security guard, and then he shot down the hallway. He did all this before he shot on the crowd. I mean, if, if you believe what they're saying. Like I say, it's just kind of hard to believe anything as people are saying now. It's just, it's, that's sad. It's sad that we live in a world today where we're just not getting the truth. And Americans want the truth so badly. It's just ridiculous. I mean, there's no need for this uh, lying to the people. I think it started, well, it's probably started a long time ago, but the, the John F. Kennedy thing was probably the worst. It gave them confidence, the elite the bankers, it gave them confidence that they could lie to the American people and pull it off. And Okay, so it looks here's a big layoff up in Canada. They're going to shut down all the Sears stores in Canada. 12,000 Canadians to lose their jobs. The only thing I can say about that is, uh, did you hear about that huge factory that broke ground? They could employ 10,000 American deplorables? No, no, I didn't hear about it today. And we can probably forget about moving to Canada too. They got enough problems. They got they got enough problems of their own up there in Canada. Everybody's going to be suffering. They used to say when America caught the cold, that the world caught pneumonia. So that's something to think about. As America declines and we start to collapse, this this could hurt many, many, many other countries. Well, definitely the ones that are closest to us, like Canada and Europe, our trading partners. But I have a funny feeling that China and Russia, they're going to be able to survive this a lot better because they've developed a plan. They're working behind the scenes because they know what's going to happen to America. They see it. They know the dollar. And they're working behind the scenes, so it won't be, it's not going to be so hard on China and Russia. I mean, that's just my own opinion. And of course, you know, Russia is always telling the truth. I mean, that's the one thing. Americans get more truth from the Russia media than we get from our own media. I mean, how sick is that? And of course, Harvey Weinstein and all his friends, the bankers, the Wall Street crowd. I mean, they, they got away with anything they wanted for many, many years, huh? That's what money will do. And of course, the only way you get that money is if you're part of their tribe and the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel will work with you. Okay, what's this news just coming out here? ABC. ABC is claiming that Mandalay Bay staff did not call the police. I mean, if you believe this, if you believe this ABC news statement, well, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. I mean, we got a huge disinformation campaign going on here. It's really bad. And you know what? I think Donald Trump is involved with it. You notice how quiet Donald Trump has been on this subject? He, yeah. Well, I'm going to leave you with my thoughts on this from the Bravo Von Mueller channel. 99% of what we're going to talk about today, you all already know it. But I think it's so troubling and so alarming, that I think we should document it. But first... You know how when there's a terrorist attack over in France or England, Donald Trump jumps on it immediately? I mean, he may not even have any information, but he knows by his gut that it looked like a terrorist. It looked like terrorism. I mean, he jumps on it. He's been criticized a lot when it happens in London, France. So where am I going with this? So, so Donald Trump is quick to jump on these things and call them terrorist acts. But here's the strange part. He was not so quick with the Las Vegas shooting. Matter of fact, even to this day, 
He still has not called the shooter a terrorist. He and we think that he has inside information. People think that Donald Trump has inside information that confirms that Paddock was working for ISIS or was an ISIS sympathizer. And yet, even with all these facts there that Trump may even have that he's not even telling, he still is not calling this an act of terrorism. And well, why is that? I can only speculate that Donald Trump is trying to protect his friends in Las Vegas. All of Donald Trump's friends are casino owners, and it's bad for business. So let's go on. What are some of the things that we're finding out today? I want to try to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Oh, and I forgot. I, Trump even has his own hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, so that would be bad for business for even a Trump hotel. So what does Trump know that he's not telling us? It's out there. Most people, if you dig deep enough, there, nobody's denying it that uh, Stephen Paddock and his girlfriend went to the Middle East possibly more than three times. And they went to Dubai. Why is Dubai so interesting to me? Well, at the end of the video, I'll throw in my two cents because there's a connection there. Now, it most people will say, oh, it's just a coincidence, it means nothing. But when you follow the money, and that's what we're going to do today, we're going to be following some money, and Dubai is going to play into it in more ways than one. So the fact is that this man went to the Middle East. He went to Dubai. And ISIS has already claimed three times that he was with them. He was a sympathizer or he converted six months ago. So here's the thing. If it's true that Paddock, Paddock converted six months ago, and then four months ago, this is really critical. If he converted six months ago, ISIS put out a warning four months ago. You can look it up. ISIS put out a warning that they were going to attack Las Vegas, and they, did that. they put that warning out four months ago. Now, this is all a public record. Could that be a reason why the insiders at MGM sold their stock? So you can't rule this out. Was that warning four months ago by ISIS? And could that be why George Soros shorted the MGM? So this is looking really bad. I know you know all of I, You've heard about this before. Many people are reporting on it, but I do think we need to document this and spread the word. George Soros shorted MGM. Top executives sold huge amounts of stock right before this happened. I mean, when you follow the money, and that's what investigators are supposed to do. Normally, when something happens like this, they follow the money. But when you're dealing with these people, you see, these people, these owners, George Soros and these type of people, they're special. It's like you're not even allowed to investigate them. It's, it's sad that we have two sets of laws in America. You know, one for us, and these guys can basically do anything they want to do. The CEO of MGM, I mean, he sold a shitload of stock. I mean, are we supposed to ignore this? I'm sure he's going to say it was a coincidence. But there is another possibility that he believed. Like when ISIS put that warning out four months ago, he believed it. And he sold his stock. Okay, so the first lawsuit came out today. Somebody, a lady who got shot and she's injured. She has a lawyer. She's suing everybody. MGM, everybody. The uh, concert, country concert people. Could this be the reason why Mandalay Bay is coming out now and claiming that it's a possibility that the story the police is putting out is incorrect? Because they're trying to protect themselves? I don't know. But this is a big story. Many people are reporting on this also, that Mandalay Bay is expressing concern that the story being expressed by the police may not be accurate. Are they trying to cover their ass during a lawsuit? You know, it's hard to tell, but we know that we, we know we're not getting the, the right information. Now, this is probably the biggest story out there. The gunman, Paddock, he was able to use the service elevator. 
that's how he got the weapons up there without being on camera, without being noticed. Apparently he used the freight, the service freight elevator. Now this is not uncommon. They do let special people do this. Like if you're a one of the like if you're a star, if you're a star staying in a hotel, they all use the service elevators, uh, big shots. It's it's a perk that they do give out. So this is not uncommon, but I think they'll probably be stopping that pretty soon. Now here's the thing that some people may not realize. MGM got in trouble back during the housing collapse. They were almost not able to build, complete city center. City center was $10 billion and they ran out of money. Guess who came in? Saudi Arabian money, Dubai world money came in and saved MGM. They basically almost bought 50% of the company back then. Now, so Dubai and Saudi Arabian money, they own a big chunk of MGM. Now, how does this play into it? I don't know for sure, but there's too many weird things happening here. I mean, how do you explain this? The shooter goes to Dubai, makes many trips to the Middle East. George Soros shorting the stock. Top executives selling their stock. We're getting all the wrong information. I mean, how do you explain this? Well, you can't. 